Welcome back everyone to another episode of Kaiju VFX. Today we are going to create Ultraman Specium Ray. This has been requested by a few people, and this is a pretty simple effect, so here's what the final product is going to look like. Alright, so like usual here, I've already got the footage in here. Got Ultraman performing the Specium Ray move. It's all color corrected, eyes are glowing, color timer's glowing, background's in there, all that good stuff. So we're going to get right into the effect. So to create the Specium Ray, we are going to create first a new black solid. Um, we will just move that above everything else and call that the Ray. So we're going to add a CC Particle World effect to this layer, which is the built-in particle system in After Effects. Normally I would use Trap Code Particular for uh, Specium Rays and stuff as that allows you to be a little bit more creative with the uh, turbulence and uh, sort of the placement of the ray. But uh, CC Particle World still works perfectly fine and just because I want you guys to be able to do this effect without having to use third party plugins uh, that you have to pay for, we're just going to use this built in particle system and it'll look pretty good still. So let's get right into it. So we're going to go to the physics tab and change the animation type from explosive to fire. And so that basically changes the animation of the particles over time to move upward in sort of a fire fashion. So obviously we need to get this uh, facing more in line with Ultraman's hand. So first we're going to just turn the velocity down to uh, zero uh, so that we just get this straight line of particles and we'll turn down the extra and the extra angle and all that stuff just so we get this flat little beam for now. So we're going to go into the extras tab into the effect camera and we're going to play around with the rotation here. So we'll play around with the rotation Z here and sort of get this uh, parallel with Ultraman's hand. That looks about right and then we'll need to rotate it in the X as well because it's firing a little bit toward the camera. So that's looking pretty good and we're going to offset the uh, beginning of the particles a little bit uh, behind Ultraman's hand and you'll see why later. Let's rotate that a bit more actually. That looks good. So we're going to go into the producer tab here and we're going to change the radius of the particle emitter because right now it's not really encompassing all of Ultraman's hand right here. So because we rotated uh, this particle in the uh, Z and X positions, uh, normally what we would increase is the radius Y, uh, logically speaking, but because it's rotated, that's not going to stretch it in the right axis. So we need to increase the particle uh, emitter radius of the X coordinate, which is going to raise it up a little bit. So we'll mess with that until we get something that uh, works a little bit better for our purposes. Maybe we'll go with 0 0.055. That looks pretty good. And then because we want this to be a flat beam essentially, uh, as the specium ray is, we're going to just turn down the radius of the Z and the Y. And that's just going to get us the uh, flat look of the specium ray that we want to go for. Maybe we'll play around with the rotation a little bit more just so we get it aligned correctly. That should be fine. So next let's increase the longevity of the particles just so they continue off screen. And let's move that producer a little bit. Maybe we'll lower the radius X a little bit more. Again, that's all to your liking, however you want to change that. So this is looking pretty decent so far. So now we're going to go into the particle tab here and uh, we're going to make the max opacity 100 just so all of the particles are completely solid. Uh, the color map from birth to death we will make that sort of a light blue color at the beginning here and then at the very end we'll make it a little bit more saturated. And uh, now we're going to change the transfer mode from composite to additive. Maybe we'll change up that uh, death color a little bit. So it's not looking too bad. And let's play around with the birth rate a little bit of these particles until we find something that uh, we're happy with. Uh, I think for now that should be fine. We'll play around with that a little bit later probably. Uh, so now let's 
drag this layer to start right at the beginning here when Ultraman uh, first gets into that T pose for the Specium Ray, so right about there. Um, we'll move this forward until the particles are essentially right past the hand at the very beginning there. So let's solo this for now actually and see how it's looking so far. Not too bad. Uh, although one thing is that this beam is moving way too slow for uh, my liking personally. The Specium Ray is usually super fast light rays and this is just sort of chugging along at a snail's pace relatively speaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the gravity settings right here and we're going to bump that up quite a bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to pull gravity in the opposite direction. So sort of gravity normally moves you know downward toward that uh, little uh, producer point right there. But if we move it in that direction, the gravity is going to pull it upward and that's going to make the particles move a little bit faster. So we're definitely getting somewhere now. All right, looking pretty good here. Uh, so right now, these lines for the uh, light beams are looking a little bit too long. And uh, one way we can fix that is because these particles are moving so fast and there's currently no motion blur, they're very crisp and drawn out. So if we enable motion blur for the composition and then enable motion blur for the specium ray layer, uh, we start to get those little shorter looking light beams and that's looking a little bit better now. Maybe we'll turn up the birth rate again if we feel like it. Alright, so I think that's a good place for the ray for now. Uh, we can go back and change it later if we want to. Uh, so next what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pre-compose this layer. We're going to move all attributes. And we're going to just quickly turn the eye off for that composition. And we're going to draw a simple mask around uh, that side of Ultraman's hand that we don't want the particles to be seen. And then we'll re-enable the layer. And uh, we need to go into there and change the mask mode to subtract. So there we go. So now we got uh, the specium ray particles coming straight out of Ultraman's hand. Maybe we'll move that to the left a little bit and change the feathering to maybe eight. That looks good. So now we've got the particles coming straight from Ultraman's hand. And now we're going to start adding some glows to this specium ray. So we're going to add a stylized glow effect. And we'll play around with the threshold a little bit in the radius. Let me get something that we're happy with. That's looking all right. And then we'll duplicate that glow. We'll increase the threshold and radius by a fair bit. So we sort of get that broader glow. And we'll duplicate that glow. And we'll increase the radius and turn down the intensity quite a bit. So that glow is looking pretty good for the specium ray. So next, let's uh, go back to that first layer that the ray begins to go out. And we'll disable that layer for now. And we're going to duplicate our Ultraman layer. We'll call it Ultraman Hand Glow, just for simplicity's sake. So this first layer right here is where the beam starts to come out of his hand. And we're going to drag uh, that layer to that point just so we don't have to deal with it earlier than that. And we're going to draw a mask around uh, this part of Ultraman's hand where the specium ray is going to come out. We'll feather that out by nine or so. And we're going to add a free third-party plugin just called VC Color Vibrance. You've seen me use this a ton of times, completely free, and it's very, a yeah, very good plugin. So we're going to change the color of this to maybe a bluish, bring up the brightness quite a bit. Add a glow effect. Turn up the threshold, the radius. Add another glow broaden that glow out. Maybe we'll change the vibrance to be more of a very bright blue. And we'll change the blend mode of this layer to screen. So now if we re-enable that specium ray layer, 
and we're going to change the blend mode of the specimen ray actually to screen as well and so now we have that ray coming out of that glowing part of Ultraman's hand which just makes it look a little bit more uh, clean and natural maybe we'll actually bump up the feather for the hand part by quite a bit yeah that's looking a little bit better maybe even a bit more and perhaps we'll select a couple of these points on the mask and drag them back so that glow takes up a little bit more of Ultraman's entire hand we'll play around with that a little bit all right so we're already almost done with this effect there's just a couple of things that I want to do that'll really help sell this uh, really bright beam of light attack so for now let's just disable these two layers and we're going to duplicate the base Ultraman layer again and we're going to rename this Ultraman light and we're going to make this layer start again when uh, the beam starts firing and we're going to draw a mask around sort of this front part of Ultraman that would be uh, receiving light from the beam so to say so we'll make a little mask around his front of his body right there that looks good and we'll re-enable the beam right here just so we can see what we're doing again so if we scrub forward and if we feather this out a little bit we're going to add a curves to uh, this layer right here bump up the brightness a little bit bring down the uh, reds and bump up the green a tad and bring up the blue a little bit maybe we'll make it even brighter we'll bring down the opacity of that just a little bit to make it a little bit more subtle so we just sort of had this little uh, light effect as the beam is being fired off here so yeah, it just sort of accentuates that attack a little bit more. And maybe we'll keyframe this a little bit, the opacity, so that it doesn't start out totally bright when the ray is not completely off screen yet. Maybe we'll bring that sooner and we'll start this out a little bit brighter. There we go. Now we're going to set another keyframe at the very end of this layer here for the opacity. We're going to select those and we're going to create a wiggle effect. Uh, we'll just set this to a magnitude of 23 with, or a frequency of 23 with a magnitude of, we'll say 50, just for the time being. And that'll just sort of flicker that layer right there. Maybe we'll actually bump up the frequency to 25 and decrease the magnitude to 25 as well just so we get something a little bit more subtle and we can sort of solo that layer and preview it just to see what it would look like and let's re-enable all the layers just to see what we've got oh, that's good and so the final step that I want to do to finish up this effect is add a lens flare which is completely optional because I'm going to use video copilot's plugin optical flares for this which you do not have to do it's not a requirement it's just what I like to do because this is a plugin that you have to pay for uh, after effects is built in lens flares and there's also plenty of tutorials out there on how to create your own anamorphic lens flares without the use of optical flares so I'm gonna go into the motion graphics folder for presets here and select vertical limit which comes with optical flares and this is gonna sort of help us create that uh, sort of vertical column of light as the beam comes out of Ultraman's arm. So we're going to change the global color real quick to sort of a light blue. And uh, that only changes a couple of elements, so we're going to have to go in manually for the most part and change the color of uh, a lot of these glows and shimmers to sort of be that light blue to match with the beam. And for this streak part right here, which is this main column of light right here, 
it's a little bit too long for my taste so we're gonna take the stretch here and we're gonna bring it down the vertical stretch just a tad maybe something like 36 that looks okay and on these multi irises we'll just change the color looks good so here's our lens flare we'll change the blend mode to screen and I think the scale is all right maybe we'll turn down the brightness and increase the scale just a little bit that's not looking too bad uh, so we'll keyframe the brightness right here the way we like it and then we'll go to the very first frame the beam is shot and increase the brightness quite a bit and we'll bezier that keyframe maybe bring it forward a little bit so that we sort of get this first pop of light as the beam is shot out there we go and we're going to also add some flicker to this lens flare so we'll set the speed to say 100 just for uh, the sake of it being super fast and we'll change the amount to be we'll just try 50 for now and if we don't like it we can change it but I think I already like that maybe not actually we'll lower that all right I think that looks good and that does it for this effect really just a simple specium ray for Ultraman and you can of course get very creative and add all sorts of turbulent particles if you have plugins like Particular or Stardust and add in like twirling lightning around it or something like I do. Just get creative with it. This is just the very basic specium ray. You can go all out and create new rays for really every Ultraman with this sort of technique from Ultra 7's wide shot to multicolored beams like Ace's Battalion Ray any of that really. This is just a very simple tutorial to help you get started on creating that sort of beam of light effect. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll uh, keep suggesting things for me to do in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys and I will try and get to any suggestions or requests for tutorials that you want me to get to. And until then, I'll see you here next time for whatever I have to offer.